health and also come tanks and invest. We talk about investing, finance, and professional development. That's the recording time of 1.51 p.m. on the Eastern Time. Ethereum contract $3,447. That's about 2.47% so far. On the overall crypto market and the equity market, you can see clearly we're reviving back up from the previous plunge that we saw earlier this morning as the interest rate spiked to 1.75% earlier today, which is relatively a record high. Um, and as we saw that interest rate spike, it has a huge direct anti-correlation effect onto the entire market, which was also when the market plunged at that specific moment, as Ethereum specifically plunged to the 3,297.64 mark, which is technically the 3,325 mark that we have identified the technical resistance level, right? So I give that benefit of the doubts that I was off by maybe $25. So I would say we're relatively precise on our technical analysis front. It seems like we're reviving back up to the next level of escalations of 3,448 down about 2.5% at the moment. Right, just to recap on a high level synopsis of what's been going on while we're plunging, right? The first one's with respect to the minutes that came out from the Federal Reserve. On their December meeting, right? Seems like the Feds are gonna be a little bit more stringent going forward, right? With respect to quantitative tapering, they're gonna shave off the on purchasing the $120 billion to $30 billion going forward. And also, Jerome Powell, based on the December speech, he has laid out that it's going to be three interest hikes this year and two in the next year and the two in the subsequent third year from now. So with respect to the hikes, it seems like we have experienced the first one today uh, and yesterday, obviously. And uh, with that affectation, drive the entire market to go down, right? And also another news that we have heard is with respect to Kazakhstan. Right, it seems like they are under pressure uh, due to an internet shutdown in that country due to the protests over the soaring fuel price, right? And as you know, Kazakhstan, in a ge geopolitical perspective, they are major center of Bitcoin mining, right? So when you shut down the internet, you shut down the electricity, right? Um, it will have a direct uh, correlation effect to Bitcoin and it will have an adjacent correlation effects to the overall crypto market, dragging the whole market to go down. Also, another news that we also have to switch into the macro affectation is with respect to the Omicron affectation, right? So it seems like from the CDC, they have announced that uh, children uh, aged from 12 to 18 years old now are required to also get the vaccination due to the fact that, you know, just domestically, the cases are exponentially surging um, again, right, just in New York, yesterday, there was about 76,000 cases reported. In New Jersey, in the tri-state area, 56,000 cases reported just in one day, right? That's a lot of people having COVID, Omicron. So with all of these news, obviously, drive just triple fear-mongering, triple fear and panic sell-off, right? So we had a we incurred basically a triple whammy, if you may, right? So with respect to the current level right now, let's just dive straight into the technicals. Um, and again, with respect to recording time of one fifty four p.m. on the Eastern Time, we are hovering at the comfortable level, right? This is the exact level that we identify in the technical analysis, right? And we are laying there because this is the comfortable level that people typically consolidate around. So the level that we're at right now with the 34 out of 70, so this is actually still oversold, right? Anywhere from below 35 is oversold. Obviously not as good when we, the lucky ones, I would say, got in around 3,297. But uh, you could see how fast and how flash crash that was, right? People immediately bought up because that's when we are screaming extreme oversold, right? That's when we were below 30 out of 70. So 30 is screaming extreme oversold, and that's why people are buying it up, right? And also because of the fact that we've been selling down for the last two consecutive days so far, and also people are looking for a reason to take profit as you saw the surge from Monday, right? And also we are seeing some uh, rotation towards the ETF and the, the dividend stocks. People are fleeing to more of a safe haven type of instruments that they have some, you know, more guaranteed type of... Um, you know, returns, knowing the fact that dividend stocks get dividend returns, dividend payments on either a monthly basis or a quarterly basis. So people tend to do that. 
when there is high uncertainty in the market, right? So right now is uh, I would say the level is still an uh, ideal level to incur risk, right? We're still hovering at a comfortable level, but again, we are taking the logical risk, right? Again, take the thirty percent of your cash reserve, allocate a portion that makes sense for you to dollar cost average, okay? Respect to Bitcoin right now with the forty three two nine. Seems like we will try to tell me something again. Uh, so Bitcoin at the moment right now at 43,000 down about flat. We're basically reviving back up. Do we see 40,000? I've been asked, asked this question before. I don't really think so because with the 32 out of 70, still very oversold. I think right now, you know, whoever got in around like the 42, 300, that was really a good dip, right? And that's the logical thing that we're identifying the TA, right? So hopefully you guys are capturing that and uh, your know, DCA logically and hold this for a long term and three to five years from now you're gonna laugh at all these numbers saying like oh man why did I not buy this right and again that's a good good problem to have when you feel like you always like regret like man I wish I bought more man I wish I incur more risk at that level when we're dipping that means you're doing it right you know what I'm trying to say uh but with respect to the Dogecoin now, let's take a look up about 1.41%, 16.13 right now. With a 30 out of 70, so uh, still kind of oversold, right? Obviously, if you got in at somewhere around like 14, which was uh, happened earlier today, um, anywhere from current level to the 14 is still a good dip for us, right? Cardano is down, is up about 1.66%. Bounce from the 120, exactly the level that I identify, right? Uh, 41 out of 70, so not the best, not the worst, but obviously if you got in 120, that was the better level, like I said, kept, I kept saying before. Respect to Solana, down about 6% right now, uh, we bounced back from the lows of the 144, right? We're back to the next comfortable level, 155, right? I kept saying 155, 133, 113, right? So we're back to a comfortable level. So the all cost average at this level is not a terrible idea. XRP is at 77 right now, very oversold, uh, the 36 out of 70. So again, right, anywhere from 77 to 75 was there, right? We bounced from the 69. We were like approximately away from it, like 71. So this is just another technical speaking, the truth again, right? Again, technicals never lies, people lies. And this is why we're bouncing from that level. Pokedow is down about 7.15%. Anywhere from the 26 to below, uh, to the bottom of 23 is still a better level for us. 45 out of 70. So not the best, not the worst still. But again, if you bought in at the 24, that was the dip. Algorand down 7.3%. Uh, anywhere from the um, 140, 135 to below will still be better level. We're still at the okay level with the 50 out of 70. So not the best, to be honest with you. Shiba Inu, we crashed down to the ideal level earlier today, right, to the 2950. And right now we're arriving back up a little bit with 37 out of 70. So not the best, not the worst, but um, right now it's still a lot, like a tolerable level to incur risk at. MacTech is uh, up about close to 4% right now. I would still not touch this, to be honest with you. There's still more room to fall to 175 to 143. AVAX is flat at the moment, 80 to 60, still better level for us. Luna's up about 1.33%, anywhere from the, again, 62, 52 to 45 from here. And let me just go to Enron real quick. Uh, right now, we're right back up, right? Anywhere from, let's see how oversold we are right now. We're at the 35, so it's still at a good level to incur risk at the moment, right? Not terrible. But ultimately, you have to believe in the assets that you're buying long term, right? And respect to risk management level, you can see that clearly we are in the attractive and steel levels for respective coins. And let me know if you have any questions. And for those actually took the logical risk, right? Pat yourself on the shoulder. You did the right thing, right? And um, I hope you guys are starting to understand the logical frame of reference that I'm applying, the methodology that I'm applying, right? Obviously, there's, there's complexity into the technicals. And for me, um, it definitely takes work to be doing, uh, being to try to be as precise as possible. And it's because like I read the charts on a daily basis and I triangulate with the news on a daily basis. It's important that you know you have to be extremely diligent, right? And extremely logical and not get emotions in play to disrupt your thought process. And that's how you become really successful investor. Okay? 
So hopefully this has been a good lesson so far, right? I think every time you see a crash or a correction, the ones that wins out are the ones that actually are logical. They are cool as a cucumber and they stay within the quantitative analysis and not use emotional manipulative tactics that these media companies try to throw at you to make the wrong decisions, right? All right, sounds good. Uh, let me know if you have any questions and take care.